let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. The Most High chose the Levites to do the work of the sanctuary. The Levites are responsible for the house of the Most High. The descendants of Levi, the Kohathites, were in charge of the Ark of the Covenant. Anything that had to do with the Ark of the Covenant, the Kohathites were responsible to handle it. The Most High had strict rules for the Ark of the Covenant. No one could touch the Ark and no one could look inside of the Ark of the Covenant. The penalty for breaking the rules was death. And when they came to Natan's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, but the oxen shook it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of God. And he smote the men of Beth Shemesh, because they had looked into the ark of the Lord. Even he smote of the people fifty thousand and threescore and ten men. And the people lamented, because the Lord had smitten many of the people with a great slaughter. Inside of the Ark of the Covenant was the Ten Commandment tablets and additional items. And thou shalt put into the Ark the testimony which I shall give thee. And after the second veil, the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer, and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant, and over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. The Ark of the Covenant was a symbol of the presence of the Most High. Whenever the Most High wanted to communicate with his people, his presence would come down on the mercy seat. The mercy seat symbolized the Most High's throne. His presence would appear in a form of a cloud to interact with the prophet. That is how Moses and the Most High interact during his generation. And there... I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony, of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. With the ark of the covenant in the midst of the Israelites, that was how the Most High dwelt among his people. Whomever the anointed prophet was, that is whom the Most High communicate through. Everywhere the Israelites went, the ark of the covenant was with them. King David wanted to build a house for the Most High. He wanted to build a temple that can house the Ark of the Covenant. But the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the Ark of God dwelleth within curtains. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. During this season of David's life, the Most High gave David and the Israelites rest from their enemies. At that time, they were a nation abiding by the Most High statutes and commandments. King David reigned over the Israelites. And it came to pass, when the king sat in his house, and the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies. While the Israelites were enjoying their rest, David seeked to build a house for the Most High. The Ark of the Covenant would travel from city to city, everywhere the Israelites traveled. That is how the Most High dwelt among his people. The Ark of the Covenant did not have a permanent home. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord, Shalt thou build me an house for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye not me an house of cedar? The Most High would not allow David to build his temple because David was a man of war. He had too much blood on his hands. When you are dealing with the affairs of the Most High, you have to be sanctified. Yah's essence is pure holiness. There is no sin in him. Today we have Israelites in the flesh trying to teach other Israelites how to live according to the holy standards of the Most High. 
The Most High would not allow anyone to make a mockery of him. Even if you believe you qualify to do the work of the Most High, the Most High must agree and choose you. For example, just because you are born male does not automatically qualify you to oversee a ministry. The Most High must anoint you in order for you to successfully lead a ministry. The Most High anointed David to be king over his people. David had other brothers older than him who could have been king. The Most High did not choose them to be king. In other words, just because you are born female does not disqualify you from teaching the word. If the Most High anoint and choose you, that is all that you need to be successful and to fulfill your calling. The Most High has high standards. He has a specific way he wants his people to live among him and to implement his statutes and commandments. The Most High gave David the blueprint and the ability to gather the resources for the temple to be built. Yah used Solomon to build the temple. Although David was a man after Yah's heart, he was not qualified to build the temple. Then David the king stood up upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. As for me, I had in mine heart to build an house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and for the footstool of our God, and had made ready for the building. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build an house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war, and hast shed blood. Solomon was the one who built the temple for the ark of the covenant to dwell. The Most High chose Jerusalem to be the city that bear his name. But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon my son to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And he said unto me, Solomon thy son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son and I will be his father. Take heed now, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build an house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Jerusalem was where Solomon built the first temple where the presence of the Most High dwelt. Once the temple was built according to the Most High standards, the Levites were the people to maintain the temple and to host all the services required at the temple. And I have taken the Levites for all the firstborn of the children of Israel. And I have given the Levites as a gift to Aaron and to his sons from among the children of Israel to do the service of the children of Israel in the tabernacle of the congregation and to make an atonement for the children of Israel, that there be no plague among the children of Israel when the children of Israel come nigh unto the sanctuary. And Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel did to the Levites according unto all that the Lord commanded Moses concerning the Levites. So did the children of Israel unto them. And the Levites were purified, and they washed their clothes. And Aaron offered them as an offering before the Lord. And Aaron made an atonement for them to cleanse them. And after that went the Levites in to do their service in the tabernacle of the congregation before Aaron and before his sons. As the Lord had commanded Moses concerning the Levites, so did they unto them. Once the temple was built, the Israelites would gather for the required feast day celebrations any atonement they needed to make, such as sin offerings. The Israelites would travel to Jerusalem from all the cities they lived to observe the celebrations held at the temple. In this generation, we do not have the Ark of the Covenant living among us and traveling with us everywhere we go. The way the presence of the Most High dwell among us today is by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Most High that dwell in us. Our bodies is the temple that house the Spirit of the Most High. The scriptures reveal that we are the temple of the Most High. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Instead of the Ark of the Covenant being the symbol of the presence of the Most High, the Holy Spirit is the presence of the Most High. When our people realize the presence of the Most High is in them, they would not do half the things they do. Instead of abusing their bodies, they would take care of the temple that housed the Spirit of the Most High in their spirit. In addition, they would be careful not to indulge in activities that would cause a separation between the Most High and them. Sins separate us from the Most High. 
But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Our bodies have the ability to house several spirits. This is why the demons call us their house. Spirits are disembodied beings. In order for them to operate in this realm, they need our body and permission. When a covenant is established, the unclean spirit gains the permission it needs to live in your body. Israelites, this is why the spirit of the most high and unclean spirits cannot live in the same body. When you are in sin, it causes the spirit of the most high to become separated from you. The most high cannot be in the presence of sin. His spirit will flee from you, leaving you at the mercy of the unclean spirit, influencing you to go against the laws of the most high. It is important, Israelites, not to forge covenants with the kingdom of darkness. Only establish covenants with the Most High. Do not forget your body is now the temple that housed the spirit of the Most High. One of the reasons the Most High gave us his spirit, his people are scattered all over the world. In addition, our nation is non-existent. In order for the Most High to never leave us nor forsake us as he promised, his spirit dwell in us. The heathens are currently treading down our homeland. We live among our enemies. We do not have the ability to have the Ark of the Covenant among all Israelites, especially when we are scattered all over the world. We are not dwelling in our home nation. Therefore, the system the Most High set up for the Israelites cannot properly operate in this generation. We are in the land of our captivity. We are serving our sentence for the iniquity our nation committed against the Most High. Yah said the Israelites are the only family he knows. Therefore, he will punish us for all of our sins. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Israelites, many of our people do not realize we are bondmen and bondwomen. Just because you are free to work and buy the things you like does not equate to freedom. We are still slaves. The sooner our people realize they are captives, the sooner the Most High can deliver us. You cannot free a person who do not realize they are captives. Only a person who needs deliverance can be delivered. Until the Israelites realize they are slaves, they will remain prisoners in the land of their captivity. The modern day religion called Christianity is an imitation of the system the Most High created for his people to follow. Not too many Israelites understand how important the tribe of Levi is to our nation. Satan created Christianity based on the role of the Levitical tribe. Remember, the Most High set the Levites apart to care for his house. This is why the Levites are not listed in the 12 tribes. They are still Israelites, but the Levites belong to the Most High. The Levites' duty as a set-apart people was to care for the house of the Most High, facilitate the ceremonial cleansing, anything that has to do with the temple, and conducting the offering on the behalf of the Israelites. Any form of communication between the Most High and His people were between Yah's prophets and the priests the Most High appointed. Today, we have a church system that the kingdom of darkness put together to increase the sins of Israel through idolatry. The abomination the Most High hates the most is idolatry. As always, anywhere there is idolatry, witchcraft is present. The church is home to high-level workers of iniquity. Satan has random people from all over the world acting as Levites to mimic the system the Most High set up for the Israelites to communicate with their Elohim. Organized religion is not of the Most High. The kingdom of darkness is the founder of religion. Our people did not attend church service every Sunday. After the destruction of the temple and the Israelites went into exile and Judah into captivity, the Israelites would gather in their neighbor's house to pray and fellowship. They were not members of a Christian church. When Peter was in prison, the disciples gathered at the house of Mary to pray for his release. They did not need to call an idle pastor for prayer. They went directly to the Most High. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark where many were gathered together praying. Before the destruction of the temple, our people kept the appointed feast days the Most High set up for his people to observe in the house of the Most High, which was in Jerusalem in the temple built for the Most High. Just like how every state has a capital that represents the state or a country has a capital that represents the entire nation, the temple the Most High had Solomon built was the ultimate temple that represents the house of the Most High where his people come to worship him. 
all Israelites would travel to that one temple to worship, observe the holy days, and give their sacrifice. The scriptures recorded how our people would travel for days before they arrived to the temple. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey. And they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. There was not additional temples built in other Israelite cities with various denominations. The only temple that housed the Spirit of the Most High was the one in Jerusalem. Remember, Jeroboam was afraid that the Israelites would return to serving the house of David because the temple was in Jerusalem, in the city where the southern kingdom of Judah reigned. Jeroboam made two golden idols. In addition, he built two altars in two different cities to prevent the children of Israel, the northern kingdom, to go to Jerusalem. Due to Jeroboam's unwise decision to make idols led to the exile of the northern kingdom. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other put he in Dan. And this thing became a sin. For the people went to worship before the one, even unto death. In this generation, we have churches in every city, country, all over the world. Most of these churches are homes to demons. The people are worshiping idols. The Elohim of Israel is not the founder, nor the Elohim being worshipped in those pagan churches, including some Israelite camps, groups, and assemblies. Satan's imitation system has churches all over the world in different denominations. The heathens are the leaders in Satan's system. This is why you see chaos in these churches, Israelite camps, assemblies, and groups. The presence of the Most High is in you. You are the temple of the Most High. You are the so-called church, not the building where you worship. Therefore, you do not need the so-called church home. You do not need to join a camp or assembly. When you gather with your family or when you gather online with teachers who have Sabbath teachings, that is fellowship. When a husband and a wife gather with their children to pray and study the word, that is fellowship. When you communicate with other Israelites, that is fellowship. The scripture said, when two or three gather in my name, there I am with you. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. If two of you gather in a car, that is fellowship and the Most High is in your mix. Satan's religion has taken the scriptures out of context. The doctrines coming from the pulpits of devils claiming that you need a church covering is false. No man or woman can cover you. If these pastors and leaders in the church could cover you, why are so many people living in bondage? Yahshua's sacrifice gave you the opportunity to draw near to the Most High without human interference. When Yahshua was sacrificed, the curtain in the temple that shielded the Holy of Holies tore, removing the barrier. Remember, only the appointed, sanctified high priest could enter the Holy of Holies. Yahshua removed that barrier, giving us the opportunity to come in the presence of the Most High. And thou shalt hang up the veil under the touches, that thou mayest bring in thither within the veil the ark of the testimony. And the veil shall divide unto you between the holy place and the most holy. But Christ being come, and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. The scriptures said the Holy Spirit is our intercessor. The Holy Spirit dwell in you. Yah is your covering. These satanic pastors and spiritual leaders cannot cover you. The Most High is exposing them one by one. 
Do not misinterpret the hierarchy the Most High set up for his people with the church covering doctrine. Anything the Most High needs to say to you, he can tell you himself. Israelites, stop trying to join demonic groups, camps, and assemblies that is not of the Most High. Satan's imitation system make it seem as if you have to belong to a church, group, or assembly. You do not. As captives, your number one priority is to build a relationship with your Elohim. Get to know your Elohim and repent. Israelites, do not let your groups, camps, churches, and assemblies you belong to take you away from your personal relationship with the Most High. Every Israelite need that one-on-one -on -one with the Most High. In addition, fellowshipping with other Israelites cannot replace your personal relationship with the Most High. When you attend every service your church, assembly, camp, and other groups offer, when do you spend time in the presence of the Most High? When you add work and family responsibility to your daily schedule, your relationship with the Most High suffer. Due to many people not spending enough time in the presence of the Most High, there is a rise in demon possession. Three times a year, our people was required to travel to Jerusalem to observe the feast days. Three times a year, the Israelite men were required to appear before the Most High. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Three times in the year all thy males shall appear before the Lord God. The Israelites were not required to go to Jerusalem every Sabbath for service. The tradition of attending weekly service stems from Satan's imitation system set up to occupy your time and to indoctrinate you into pagan worship. If you can find a good assembly or a group to be a part of, that is good. However, the assembly, group, and camp should not overshadow your personal time with Yah nor consume your existence. Do not believe Satan's lie of you requiring to have a membership at your local church, group, or camp. The reason Satan's imitation system pushed for you to have a church covering, the workers of iniquity can indoctrinate many in the masses. Satan can successfully renew the covenants to keep you in bondage. Remember I said to you, be careful with these altar calls. You do not know what God is behind those altars. In addition, you do not know if your pastor, teacher, or leader is a worker of iniquity in secret. In order for these workers of iniquity to fulfill their covenant with the kingdom of darkness, they need to bring souls. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. And with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. When the workers of iniquity conduct an altar call, these workers of iniquity could be tying your spirit to their demonic altars. You know they must have an altar call every service. Money is another reason they push for you to have a church covering. Not only will they brainwash you in mass quantity, they will rob you senseless through the false doctrine of tithes. Idolatry is another reason Satan's religion system pushed for a church covering. If Satan can keep the Israelites in rebellion through idolatry, the longer the kingdom of darkness and the serpent seed can rule. Religion, Israelite groups, and assemblies can become a distraction. Satan wants you to idolize your leaders and lean on your leaders instead of seeking the Most High for yourself. When you do not seek Yah for yourself, Satan can hinder your relationship with Yah and slow down your growth process. You will begin to believe you're not capable to find truth on your own. You become dependent on your leaders. Israelites, the Most High wants you to be dependent on Him. Many Israelites have brought the church covering indoctrination with them into the awakening. Many Israelites profess this walk is lonely. Israelites do not let the kingdom of darkness deceive you into believing this walk is lonely. Through this belief, Satan will deceive you into joining demonic churches, groups, and camps. Israelites, you have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yah is all that you need in this awakening. There is nothing wrong with gathering with fellow Israelites. However, do not let it consume your life. In addition, do not let it replace your personal relationship with the Most High. It is through the one-on-one -on -one with the Most High that will accelerate your growth and transform your life. 
Remember, you are the church, not the building. Israelites, you must learn to stand on your own two feet. Yah will become the friend, father, and companion you are seeking in this awakening. Everything you need, you will find it in the Most High. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths.